and we're told that if we were to construct this triangle here, we're being told that we have isosceles, that AB is equal to AC. If it says the midpoint of BC, let's say that's the midpoint, so that double is that double, and that is called D, and then it says the foot of the altitude from D to AC. So we have to go straight down 90 degrees, and this guy here, this point is called E, and then it says that F is the midpoint of DE. So right here in the middle, if I put triple, triple bar, triple bar, this guy is called F. That is the setup. Let's go from here. So part A, they want the coordinates of E and F in terms of A, B, and C. Notice that point D is right between B and C. So let me just tilt the paper like this. This guy is right between these ones. It's the midpoint. So how can I find the coordinates of D? Find the midpoint. So I know B and I know C. Find the midpoint of these guys and their midpoint, right? Their midpoint is D. So how do you find the midpoint? You add the axis divided by two. You add the y's divided by two. A plus C over two. And that's the X coordinate of point D. It's the midpoint. You average the X's, bang, bang. Now average the Y's. B plus zero is B. Divide by two, and it's B over two. So that is, these are the coordinates of point D. And that helps us because notice that E and F are directly beneath point D. For instance, E is the same as D, but it's on the X axis. So for that reason, we actually know the coordinates of point E. It would be A plus C over two, comma zero. That E is at the X axis, so the Y coordinate is zero. So that takes care of point E. Now for point F, point F is directly between E and D. It's exactly halfway to the top of D. So this point, its Y coordinate is half the y coordinate of this guy it has the same x, but it has half the coordinate, half the y coordinate of d. So half of b over two would be b over four. So for part a of this exercise, they wanted the coordinates of points e and f, there they are. Now, before we move on to the next part of this exercise, let's establish one thing real quick. a is at zero, zero, b is at a, b. How do I go from here to here? I have to go to the side, and then I have to stop and I have to go up. How much movement is side to side? It's A movement, little a. That's this guy here, this is little a. And how much do you have to climb up toward the sky to reach point B? You have to go up little b. And when you go like that, when you make a perfect turn, it's 90 degrees. They were saying that AC is the same as AB. Now, what's the length of AC? Well, the length of AC has to be little c because point C is located at little c comma zero. So because this green has a length of C, that means that this green also has a length of C. Is we can go Pythagorean theorem on that pink triangle where it's gonna be little a squared plus little b squared equals little c squared. Now with your permission, I'm gonna do something kind of weird. Let me move this to this side and let me move that to that side. A squared minus C squared equals negative B squared. I am gonna put a pink box around this. We will come back to this pink box at the very end. For now, let's move on. Here is a really quick FYI from Algebra 1. A fact, perpendicular lines have slopes whose product is, well watch here. This pink one has a slope three over two. This green one has a slope negative two thirds. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, these are perpendicular. And I know that they're perpendicular, not because I drew it like that, but because if I take this slope, three over two, and I multiply it with this slope, negative two over three, when I multiply the slopes, I get negative one. Anytime you take two slopes, multiply, and it's negative one, that means that those slopes belong to lines that are, boom, perpendicular. So as a fact, perpendicular lines have slopes whose product is negative one. You take two slopes, multiplies to negative one, bam, they're perpendicular, which means you've got four right angles. The last part is to show that AF, this purple, 
is perpendicular to BE, this guy here. So I did them in purple just so they can stand out. So I wanna show that, that's an F right here. I wanna show that AF perpendicular BE. So I've written them down right here. Remember that point A is at zero, zero. Point F is located here. That's part of what we found the first time. And then the coordinates of B and E are there and there. These, these things we found, right? This was given to us, this we found. I want to find the slope of this guy and I wanna find the slope of this one. Now remember for slope is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So to find the slope of AF, you can go Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And here's what I got. Instead of dividing, I multiplied by a reciprocal and I got this here for the slope of AF. Now let's do the same thing for the slope of BE. So I have this here so far, of A plus one half of C. Why don't I actually multiply top and bottom by negative two? That'll be two B over this. And so now we've reached the final part. We wanna take this slope here and this slope here and we wanna multiply them. So we took the slope of one of them. We took the slope of the other here, here. When you multiply that two knocks out that two in the top, you have B times B, which is B squared. In the bottom, you have A plus C times A minus C, which if you distribute is A squared minus C squared. And that's when this guy comes in clutch. Remember the pink box? A squared minus C squared is the same as negative B squared. So in the denominator, by substitution, we get negative B squared because that knocks out the B squared from the top. So it's just negative one. So that's how you prove or show that these two guys are perpendicular by finding their slope, slope, taking the two slopes, multiplying them, perpendicular lines have slopes whose product is negative one and showing that the product becomes negative one after you do some clever algebra and some clever manipulations. Boom, there it is.